welcome back to Food Night in UK and I am here with one of the most talked about bands on the British metal scene at the moment, Erna in the house. Right. Hello guys, Hello. how are you doing? Yeah, good, like, it's the first day of the tour. Um, yeah. It's been snow, you know, we're all pretty fucking cold. Um, yes. So we're looking at, uh, looking forward to having some nice warm food. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we've got half and half today. We've got half me is half uh, vegan, so we've got everything covered. Everything covered. Thanks to our friends at Coltwing. Uh, as usual, big up Coltwing. Am I good to crack this open? Yes, let's do that. Let's do that, Mike. Right. Let's big up to Liquid Death, who uh, keep us all hydrated, muddy, thirst, the death's plastic, all that business. It's a good drop. It's a good drop. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they keep our, our uh, team hydrated. So there you go. Is that enough for you guys? Yes. <laughs> um, so, be listen to your album. Fabulous, really, really, really enjoying the latest record. And one thing that comes across is that it's got such breadth to it, 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 it takes in quite a lot of different styles. Yeah. Um, and and um, after reading up a bit as well, that's something I think, it would it be correct to say you pride yourself in being that kind of eclectic melting pot of a band? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, think, I think it helps what I put Backgrounds, mm. so I've been exposed to different genres of music. Bands, James has dad's a mega mega music guy. Right. Um, and James is a drum teacher. Right. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that comes across. <laughs> <laughs> and um, for myself, I kind of had to find my own way. Certainly, when it comes to heavier music. Sure. Um, but my family are all into like completely different stuff. Yeah. But the stuff that I also listen to is a kind of, as it for me, I made. Mm. Um, and yeah, I mean, just, yeah like uh, across us, like, we listen to all different types of music outside of playing in the band as well. Yeah. Obviously, we don't draw in from all influences, but mm. I mean, it helps with like what what we write and like what we're into. That's it. I, I would say uh, it was like, I was talking to Brady from Conjure about this, um, who probably has similar influences to you, uh, in that it, it's you. you, you uh, show humility in the face of the craft mm -hmm. in that what is what the song needs mm -hmm. you just yeah. chuck them what the song needs you know? I, totally I think previously myself and Angus were in another band and I think it got to a point where it was always like it was like not one any no sections can sound the same mm. how, how the f*** did we ever make a career of that because we set ourselves so many um, half targets you yeah. know, we managed to kind of get one album and that kind of eventually led into Urn, but with Urn it was like a bit more like if we're going to spend a couple of weeks or something with yeah. thoughts, thoughts and issue and in the end it was pretty much got down to what what's the best thing for the song, what's the yeah. song, what makes the song flow and it's instead of sometimes trying to cram something in there yeah, yeah. and it was like we used to be scared of making a section be musically easy right and it's just like oh but now it's just like it does it sound good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, try some of this bacon, eh? You can kind of repeat all that kind of thing, but yeah, yeah, just, yeah can't be limited to that. I mean, one thing that spring into my head, and you probably get this a lot, which was like Levi from era Mastodon. It's specifically that era, okay. which is my favourite era. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and, and also Gajira. Mm -hmm. there's there's, but you're going to get that Gajira thing with the fact. And this brings me on to my next question. You you are a power trio, yeah. which is unusual these days, um, but um, always welcome. I love it when you get a good power trio. It can say so much. Look at Rage Against the Machine, for instance. Yeah. Um, do you find that you excel within the parameters of just the three of you? Because I find with my, myself with music is uh, if I'm given parameters that I've got to be creative within mm -hmm. instead of saying oh you've got like all these sounds to work with no you've just got these three make the most of them do you find that helps well I, I, I do think so and, you know we keep adding stuff like Angus you know he's got more pedals than the Tour de France you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it looks like he's like river dancing over there but <laughs> it's you know I sat trying to add to it and like recently we've added some live videos from Bloodstock and it is mm. just it's a DI from the drums. There's no, mm. there's no backing tracks. There's no overdubs or anything. Mm. And it's just like because that's what we sound like. We don't want to, yeah. we don't want to have that. I want, 
I want the energy to be real and raw. And I, I, and I think the scene needs that. <laughs> I think having a three piece actually allows a little bit more ebb and flow to yes. music as well, like especially when it comes to the angles and solos. Sure. Everything drops back a little bit, it gives them that, I love that. to really focus on the solo rather than having another rhythm guitar in the background yeah. doing the unity with Joe just stops and steps up the yeah, yeah. bass sound and that's it, yeah. and go for it. And it's, it's the less is more thing where the things have more impact. Like if you just drop back to the bass and then the guitars come back yeah. in, it just got so much more impact. Well, that's what we had, I think, with a few people from Bloodstock who said they were walking past and heard us and checked us out and went, wait, that's three people. Yeah. And, they that like that. and, and that's, that's why they call it power part. trio, isn't it? Because it has that power. Yeah. Nothing's yeah. tripping over anything. I always think of like when you do a mix down, some of the most powerful mix downs ever, when sounds aren't competing for space, <laughs> where everything's got its own there, you know, so that's where the power trio comes into itself because you each got your own levels. Uh, yeah, I think what helps with us is our sound guy, um, Tom, young guy, um, he's in the back of Tusker. Oh, yeah, I know Tusker. Just two people, yeah, so you know, he, he's aware of that. But a big thing for him in the summer, we thought he was good. I mean, we're like the band, like we're the first band to kind of take, take him out and what have you, and then um, you know, we're learning with each other, we're going out doing these festivals, and it's like. Fuck and then we got the Gajira shows. And yeah. the Johan, that sound guy, sort of, who's the best, thing? the Johan is the best sound, I mean, he reckons the guy who does In Flames is, but I think if anyone who's seen Gajira live, yeah. it's a different level. I think uh, Brady echoed that yeah. as well. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the next level. And he sort of kind of let Tom use his desk and just sort of talk Tom. Oh, nice. Like, the benefits. Yeah. Not talk Tom, just kind of. That's some points. Yeah. Yeah. Since um, Tom's done some other bits and bobs, he's done in Slave and what awesome. have you, and he's he is. I know people say it, the extra, the full member, mm. but it's weird now. Like when we, we go out and do shows and that, and it's like when, when Tom can't do it because he has might have something else with Tusker. Yeah, it's almost like oh, sometimes I won't even bother to get another sound guy. We just use the new guy. Yeah, Tom yeah. Will know better. Yeah, like, ring sounds. Yeah, I, it it is like you say the fourth member thing. Mm. Especially, I mean, everyone talks about it in the studio, mm -hmm. but in the live arena as well. Oh, Especially yeah. more and more these days when like live sounds becoming more sophisticated uh -huh. with in ears and yes. it's, it's a totally different ball game these days and click and whatnot. I mean, yeah. do you guys play with click? Or I play through click. Yeah. You play through click. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like certain songs where like I'll start it, so mm. we, we then we don't go to click because I I don't like click and like yeah. So then I'll start at a tempo I think it should be. Mm. We'll go from there. But then there are songs where from the start it's a click for that. Sure, sure. Yeah. I am. Um, I the weird thing is like we we recorded the album with click pretty much. Like, yeah. We was in a room jamming. But when it comes to that live thing, mm. I like to feel like I'm a bit pushing pull. Yeah, I'm about to blow up. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. good to have that. James is an actual musician. And I'm a complete blagger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, we all have that. <laughs> we, we all have that. Without James, we'd be. Won't be half the band. Yeah, um, it's, it's all about the impact, isn't it? Um, Especially with your band, where it, it is about those dynamics. Okay. Oh, yeah. Which is, I wanted to get on something there. Like, you know, we mentioned before about like the melting part of sounds and stuff. You uh, signed to Candlelight Records. Mm -hmm. um, do you find, because I noticed there are some black metal fits in there. There's, there's some, it's, I mean, the album opens with the most black metal sounding minor chords, you know? Oh, yeah. they, they do sound like, you know, those, those minors. It's like it's, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's got that frostiness about yeah. it. Is that an influence of um, Silent Sea, Candlelight, or were you just into that sort of stuff already? Do you know, at, at the time, I know it was very early days, mm. and, um, you know, they just showed me instant interest. Mm. And, you know, and we just went, kind of went for it and it was like, let me see. And, you know, fast forward, whatever, a year. Mm. And, uh, you know, they're helping us arrange going over to the States, you know. And yeah, so that's right. We're not really, I, know, I don't think we go hand in hand with many of the, the mm. other bands they have. Like, They've diversified a bit, haven't they? They've got Cage Fight. Yeah. yeah. They've got a few other bits, but nothing that I would say that really um, we can go hand in hand and maybe it's shown maybe yeah. some of the stuff when we're doing more oh, yeah. and stuff um, we can tie in with that but um, th that's you know it, you know we kind of one of the only bands who do what we do yeah um, on that label but yeah it's um you know we, we had to you know we, we're learning of, as the kind of journey goes on yeah. and then, you know, we've got management team and we recently moved to another agent uh, yeah. agency which is a it's been a, it's a big step and yeah you know we, I never thought I'd be 
to ensure that the other the other two was there. Like I never thought we'd be on the same lady who books Metallica and Iron Maiden. Sure, and, right. And then we're we're there and it's just like Okay. You know, yeah, yeah. The first thing she did was put us out with Yashira, and I'm like, oh, this is fine. Right. Yeah. You know, Enjoy the ride. <laughs> yeah. One, one week black art, and next week I'm like, we turned up in Amsterdam. I'm like, you know, sort of felt maybe, you know, I think safe to say the first two shows out of our day. Yeah. Um, just kind of like, oh, let's just, we're just there just to warm up, and then it's just, we, we had like a, a sort of a team talk, and it's just. Speech shows, you don't just some. drop away. Yeah, yeah. Let's just go out there and change the set to what we want. And then yeah. it, it was a wise decision. Absolutely. I mean, I, I always think, especially like my lot, it's like when we go out, it's like play every night as if it's your last, you know yeah. what I mean? Because even if it's 10 people, it might go away and tell like yeah. 10 of their mates and 10 of their mates, you yeah. know. I've, I've had to learn personally, like sometimes I don't get that whole defeatist attitude, mm. and I kind of like more so this year, like. I need to be in the right mindset. Mm. Like we played Bloodstock and I felt, you know, completely guilty. And then, like to to the other guys, like I've got a lot of personal family stuff going on. Yeah. And yeah. To be fair, it's horrible as it sounds, and I love the festival and whatnot. I just there was a massive part of me where I was just like, I don't know if I want to be here today. I want to play sure. the show. Sure. And but, whatnot, and I just I'm not fully engaged. Well, you see, everybody has bad days at work. This is what people don't understand. That like people have bad days at work, but not everyone has a bad day at work on stage. Mm, yeah. Although it could be argued if you're behind a bar or if you're a chef or whatever, you are kind of on stage. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, if you're out there in front of thousands of people, like you would be a bloodstock, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. having a bad day can be. Yeah, yeah, right. but you still want to get your all. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you're not feeling it, then and you've got you, you you've got that thing where it's just like, hey, people would kill to be in my position right now, yeah. don't you? So you, you do have a duty, is it? Yeah. But, yeah. but you have a duty yeah. to yourself as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's the weirdest thing for me. We played, we literally finished bloodstock, and Angus knows me pretty well. And I just like looked at Angus, and I was just like, I just not, I'm just on firing. Yeah. Today, um, probably. Well, the reviews didn't say that. Yeah. But, yeah. Tommy Tom's. Tommy Tom's, Bacon A's. We brought that in um, to give it a, a bowl call. Now, just want to ask you, do, do you think it tastes like bacon? Yeah. Uh, there you go, Tommy Tom's. If somebody you hasn't eaten bacon, bacon mashed it. Many, if somebody hasn't had bacon in a long time, sorry, I'm just doing more wings. I'm <laughs> 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 Who hasn't had bacon for a long time? I, I'm, I'm, I think he smashed I'm, that. Hasn't I'm he? really happy. Like, yeah, what, you know, all, all vegan. She's done a bloody sterling job there. So there you go. Vegans you don't need to miss <laughs> out on them bacon flavours. Toppy Tom's got you covered. Yeah. Right. What we've also got today is um, I'll just show this to the camera. Oh. Um, Angels with Dirty Faces by Thick Sources out of here, Leeds. Uh, this is a Christmas sauce, cranberry and maple with some habanero in there to, up, to take up the spicy bits. Yeah. There's some blueberries and some chipotle. So if you want to have yeah. a track. Oh no, I've already had some of that. <laughs> You've already done that? Yeah, had yeah. the habanero. Yeah. Really nice, really nice. I haven't tried that one yet. Yeah, so yeah, we'll get your review. We'll get your yeah, review. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is sauce boss. We'll we'll leave some for the uh for the support band. Absolutely. Well, we'll get the um the thanks for for having us soon. This is quite a nice unique thing. Yeah. yeah. Had, this is the opening day. It's been a bit. Yeah. Um, trying to trying to get up here and there's some snow going oh, yeah. on. Yeah. I know my heart did sink when I saw that snow last night. I was yeah. just like, oh please don't. My <laughs> friend lives here and he texted me and I was like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you know, and then I said to our manager, and he was like, here, here, our manager was in Switzerland, and he sent me a picture. I was like, yeah, whatever, mate. Yeah, <laughs> English. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I, mean, I remember, I, I lived in uh, Norway for a year, mm -hmm. uh, in Bergen, yeah, and yeah. they just get on with it, man. They just, it, nothing stops. Yeah, it's, um, I, we, we, so, we just popped up into uh, Oslo for the first time. Yeah, I'm sure I kind of expected it. And it's like, yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's just that was weird though. Like we kind of, I think the day, I think it was a bit the weather was overcast. We was only there for like six hours. Yeah, I was like, I'm not sure what I I expected. I and mean, we went to that one record shop. Oh, how well, better? Yeah, yeah. she isn't called that anymore, but yeah. Well, we were on the cruise, so we were going to that thing shop yeah. as well. So it's interesting getting like over 500 people in one little record yeah. shop. Where it was. It, it, it was like a little hole in the ground as well. Yeah. Like originally, it was. It was just some guy who had a few records and they just all hang out there. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was just like, I don't know, we kind of all went in and I was like, this, uh, 
I'd like to be able to look, properly look around. It's like, let's just get down to the basement and get our picture. <laughs> Yeah, because so, uh, that's what everyone wants when they so, get it. Yeah. Yeah. They just want to stand where you want them as and bad work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you said though, it's just like, they're selling birds and, and like rivals. The guy who killed him. Yeah, that's yeah. Like, that's yeah. Like, true. Yeah, there's some birds in there. It's yeah. like, Oh, he's the uh, coach. Yeah. yeah, he killed yeah. one of your members of staff. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. the yeah. member of staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's like, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's weird. Like, I, you know, I would just like to have gone maybe a time when it was just, you know, not, not Ramo. Yeah. Had a real look around and kind of, but yeah, there was a bit, I was just like, kind of a weird thing, like waiting on the stair, stairwell, like me and Nurgle, which is something like, what am I oh, right. what doing here? He must be thinking. <laughs> Oh, you were being? <laughs> yeah, no, that was his uh, me good thing with uh, me and that man. He's up, uh, oh, me and that man? Uh, oh, I love that man. Uh, yeah. And like the, uh, and onto others. And it, was, um, oh, it, it, was, it was cool. But it was just like a very, very weird experience. It, <laughs> off. it felt more like a museum because everyone was just kind of like, like, like kind of queuing up and going yeah. and slowly to come back out again. <laughs> no one was actually perusing anything. <laughs> yeah. And it was just, um, and it was. And as usual, if you like what you see there, please subscribe, hit the bell, hit the notifications, leave a comment. You know what to do. It keeps us doing what we do. So, yeah. So, you tried the uh, cranberry. We need to give the cran yeah. cranberry a mention. Yeah. What were we saying? Delicious, yeah. Delicious, there we go. It's not about the spice levels, but it's not spicy at all. No, no. I'm trying to try it. He's the sort of thing. I'll yeah. sure going to a curry house. Somebody orders like yogurt to eat. Right. It's so delicate. Well, I have to be. <laughs> you see, this is the side of food and that, that people don't see is the fact that when we started out, it was all like, oh, let's do Carolina Reapers and stuff. And then I thought, no, people have got to sing. Yeah. You know, so you can't oh, yeah. mess about with people's throats. Yeah, yeah. So, like, we have to keep it in the sort of mild to mid. Well, so that's why I always thought, like, you don't want to, like, especially that we see that so it's a hot one, it's like, you want someone to talk during an interview, right? Oh, yeah. You're sitting there choking. No, yeah, no, no, no. You know, I'd say the same no, thing, mate. I, I, I couldn't hack it. Do you know what I mean? Like, we leave that stuff for hot ones and their, and their movie stars. We know nothing about them. <laughs> but no, um, it's funny you uh, touched on earlier with the, with the Mastodon thing. We get it quite a lot, but mm. you know, there's certain like Mastodon records like we love, mm. but they're not. It's like my practice guy right, is in my top right, sort of, like yeah. Ted and what have you. But it's never a black band that I go, "Cool, let I need some inspiration." What was yeah, what well, we It's weird, and I, I get, I get. It. I think a lot of it comes from vocally and the drums. Yeah. For my ears, the dr the drums, the yeah. tone of the drum, the the actual the way he keyed the drums. Yeah, true. Yeah, cool. No, it's nice. Oh, he drums. He likes the drums. It's like some pangy, is what I was trying to say. <laughs> we also get called like a sludge band as well. We yeah, guess. and it's like I don't really see the sludge resemblance. No, I saw that, and I thought. Yeah. Mm. Because when oh, yeah. I think about like Sludge, I think of I Hate God or something yeah. like that. Yeah. I think a lot of it, me and Angus used to be in a band called Hang the Bastard. Oh, I know played, Hang the Bastard. Who played yes. more of that sort of stuff. Um, and I think we just, I think it's just lazy. Yeah. When people go, there's a certain amount. Love well, Yeah, I think you haven't taken the time. Yeah, when, I, when you first came under my radar, I think it must have been after one of your first records, um, like, I was struck by like how much you were paying homage well, you seem to be paying homage to like classic metal yeah. in there. Like there was definitely a bit of Metallica, oh, yeah. like but but like the really fast early stuff, uh -huh. and um, there was even a bit of Machine Head riffery going on in there. You know, um, but it wasn't like it was forced in there. Mm -hmm. It just seemed like a natural. Everything in it seems natural. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a weird thing. Like I see people, they will spend a couple of paragraphs trying the hardest to pigeonhole us and yeah. I'm like but they said in the first sentence this band can't be pigeonholed yeah, yeah. and then they're desperately <laughs> trying yeah. and we've had, we've had we get compared to bands I've never even listened to but that's good that people are trying to because this, it means that they don't know they feel like they have to put it in a category because you are your own category it, 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 it's <laughs> funny sometimes I mean there was one interview that these American guys they, they were watching it and they were like, these guys on that on the metal encyclopedia, it says that sludge doom, it's got nothing to do with us, we didn't like that. And they spent 20 minutes like, no, no, this can't be sludge of doom. And then they, they kind of, they was all right about it, one of them more so than the other. <laughs> and then the next week they like raved about something. <laughs>
So I was just like, <laughs> all right, lads, uh, 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 do you know what? I'll be sludging doom. Uh, do you know what I mean? I tell you what, man. I mean, it's like my my son's generation. Yeah. Like uh, he's sixteen, and he's got music that slaps, music that doesn't slap, and that is his genre. Yeah. There, and I think that's a good way to be, actually. But that's that's the kids at the moment. They've grown up with Spotify, so they've got the history of music on their phone. Yeah. And they're yeah. Like, no, I work it out. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, 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 I'd be gutted, like. Them day you start like, bunking off school and to go and buy a new record, yeah, saving your pocket money to yeah. go and get what or not from the CD warehouse. Well, and that's when it, that's why we've got such nostalgia for that stuff because it actually meant something. You only had yeah. like ten quid that month. It better be a, a good record. Yeah, right. Yeah. And it's, it's like going to Virgin Mega Store as well. I mean, they've got like five to listen to. Yeah, yeah. Them, and it's like, oh, I'll check out this today. Like. Yeah. That's when you can kind of preview music before Spotify. Yeah, right. And that's, that's what older, I like. That. Sorry, yeah. sorry, mates, older brothers. Well, I mean, for my older brother, right? Oh. My dad and Jake, like my older brother, he works, he was like working in H&B part-time. I was off 12, 13, and he's like, oh, you reckon it's this and that, and he'd like, he would do a copy of it, or he'd nick it. And, yeah. it. <laughs> and, um, and then I'd speak to a guy called Luke Zapparaniuk, and he would, he would make you CDs, he had a yeah. like, good set you know, he'd make you CDs of 30 tracks for 50p or something, whatever yeah. parts of the thing is. And that's how you just learn. And then yeah, yeah. you would go out and buy, you'd go and save money, go and buy a record. Go, oh, I've heard of this band, but I've like, I've, 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 I've read that first Orgy record. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan Davis is on this. Yeah. And, and I listened to it and I was Dark like, days, man. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, sometimes you can walk out of it and I, I might have bought <laughs> Rust in Peace or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you're like, oh, what um, One of the best ones for me, I bought Best of the Beast from Macros, two quid. Right. The first greatest hits I think I made of. Yeah. Bollocks, yeah oh, I think everyone remembers their first made from Yeah. Um, we're going to call it a day here. Thanks for watching and um, thanks for being on Food Naughty, guys. Thank you very much. Brilliant.